17th meeting of the Ornell Planning Commission. We start each meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. We ask that you join us. Agenda tonight is an oath of office for Scott Kirshner and Gary Kramer. Yes, good evening, uh, Chair. Congratulations on um, Chris Wallace as well for being our new chair to the planning commission. And then um, Scott Kirshner and Gary Kramer have been appointed as commissioners. So if you would please stand and raise your right hand and then repeat after me. I state your name. I, Gary Kramer. Do solemnly swear. Do solemnly swear. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. That I will support the Constitution of the United States. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And the Constitution of the State of Minnesota. And that I will faithfully. And that I will faithfully. Discharge the duties. Discharge the duties. Of the Office of Planning Commissioner. Of the Office of Planning Commissioner. On, of the City of Orono. Of the City of Orono. In the County of Hennepin. In the County of Hennepin. In the state of Minnesota. In the state of Minnesota. To the best of my judgment and ability. To the best of my judgment and ability. Thank you so much and congratulations. Um, please sign the oaths of office and then I will get them stamped and signed appropriately. So thank you. I'll collect them at the end. Second item on the agenda is the approval of the agenda. Any discussion? Any motions? So moved. Second. We had a first and a second. That was um, Kirshner and Erickson for the second. Go to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Uh, third item is the approval of the minutes for March 20th, 2023. Do I hear a motion? Second. I have a first and a second. Let's put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to the public hearings. The first public hearing is LA 23-2, City of Orono for 1449 Shoreline Drive and 1475 Shoreline Drive, request for a vacation of existing right-of-way, no longer needed for a result of the County Road 15 reconstruction. Ms. Olkin. Uh, yes, good evening, uh, Chair and Commissioners. Um, Melanie, if you wanna go to page one of that PDF. 
Uh, tonight in front of you, you have an application to vacate unused right-of-way along uh, County Road 15 and from a Tanager Bridge uh, reconstruction project from um, Hennepin County. Um, the City of Orono is uh, requesting to vacate the portions of the right-of-way abutting 1449 Shoreline Drive and 1475 Shoreline Drive. Um, Hennepin County conducted a road project along this right-of-way um, and reconstructing that Tanager Bridge. As part of that pro project, land from the, um, those abutting properties um, adjacent to the bridge was required to the north of the existing right of way um, to allow for realignment of that bridge. Um, portions of the existing uh, Tiny Road 15 right of way are no longer needed to support that road improvement. Uh, the City Council, uh, the Orono City Council in 2020, passed a resolution attached um, in your packet tonight confirming that the unused land would be vacated. Hennepin County completed the road project, um, which realigned uh, the county road and the Tanager Bridge in 2022. And the county has transferred that land to the city of Orono in order to vacate, um, to follow the vacation process accordingly. Uh, the city is not aware of any utilities located within the right-of-way um, space, and we have notified private utilities. It is my understanding also that the utilities were working in conjunction with the county as part of this road project. Um, uh, DNR notification uh, did happen, and they have submitted uh, a letter saying that they uh, are in support of the vacation with no objection. Um, uh, for analysis, uh, the land does not serve a public purpose and does not have uh, use for city services. Uh, city Council approved that resolution in 2020 in support of vacating the unused land. Uh, staff would recommend approval of the proposed vacation. No public comment was submitted to staff uh, for this application, so staff is recommending approval. I'd be happy to answer any questions. I believe um, there is an abundant property owner here as well that may like to speak. Any questions for staff? No. Any, um, would like to open up a public hearing. Anyone from the public would like to comment on this application, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Yeah, my name is Richie Anderson. I own the property at 1449 Shoreline Drive. Just so everybody's clear, when this project started, my agreement with the Hennepin County was any property they took on one side, they would get back I would get back on the other side, which is the easement we're talking about now. It's not being used. Had to go back to the city first. I've been waiting since 2020 to get this resolved. And when the bridge project started, I said, I'm not going to hold you up. They made me an offer to buy the easement that they needed. Uh, we had an agreement. I said, you can take more construction property if you want it. I said, whatever you take on this side, I will not hold you up. Whatever you take on this side, I want back on the other side, which I'm not getting apples for apples because they still need that little carve out there for the drainage, uh, which is on the uh, southeast corner of the bridge. That That is not going, going back. They kept that easement for the drainage. So it's not like we're getting something for nothing. It was agreed upon in the beginning I didn't hold them up on price. I gave them more property than they needed for the construction easement. And so it's not like the city of Orno is giving us something. It's been in the works since that bridge was made. And in 2022, as you can see in the document, uh, county final, I've been paying an attorney to get this thing done. It looks like it was done in 2022. I finally called the guy that made the agreement with me. I said, let's go. And so you can see it was signed in 23. So, but anyway, not like you're giving us something that we didn't have an agreement to get. So, seems simple to me, but uh, government. Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back up here for discussion. Anyone like to take a stab at it? Mr. Lee? I do have kind of a unique circumstance uh, in this particular project because I work very closely with the Hennepin County Deputy Right-of-Way Officer that uh, 
actually arranged to have the realignment, and the reason being, so on the other side of the bridge from these properties was another property owner that needed some expertise that I had because I had nearly 25 years of working with these right-of-way acquisitions and the right-of-way changes. So I assisted Mr. Wilson, whose name you'll, spell, you'll see this spelled incorrectly because it has two L's in it, kind of an unusual spelling. But it gave me an opportunity to work very closely with the uh, Hennepin County deputy that did oversee uh, the acquisition and the right-of-way alignment change. Uh, I was very aware of two precedents at that time, and that's the one, there is a vacation like this, the state mandates that if there is a abandonment or the county decides that they no longer have a use for the property, it must actually pass through the ownership and be deeded to the municipality in which it exists before it goes to typically, and here's the other precedent I can share with you, which we can revisit again later on when we're talking about maybe another one of these items, is that the adjoining property owner will typically always have first rate of refusal. There's thousands of cases of this in every county in the state of Minnesota. So I understand what Mr. Anderson is saying, and uh, because I was privy to that information early on in the process, uh, I would tend to uh, agree with him. But at this point, I guess all we're really deciding is whether or not we're actually uh, approving the vacation or making advisement to council to approve the vacation. And uh, I'm supportive of this. Thank you. Anyone else? I don't have anything new to offer. It, it seems fairly cut and dry as far as bridge realignment goes. I got the one here and cross that bridge multiple times a day and know about the project. And I don't have anything to add other than I'm supportive. Mr. Erickson? Well, from the uh, motorist and the resident uh, standpoint, it's uh, certainly a tremendous improvement over what was there before. And I certainly appreciate the uh, efforts of the uh, property owner and, uh, and the county and the city staff and uh, everyone working together to uh, come up with a finished product that's uh, top quality. I did have one question for staff and it's my understanding that this, the portion of the land that we are proposing to vacate was never city land to begin with. This was county right of way for the old bridge. True, yep, it was county right away, um, but as uh, Densley also uh, discussed, um, when a county no longer needs uh, land or has no longer use for like right of way land, it has to be deeded to the city to process that vacation or to conduct that vacation process. Perfect. Um, thanks to Mr. Anderson's point, this is simple, it's a no brainer to approve this. and. Thank you for your patience. <laughs> Mark? Yeah, I guess it looks like the administrative have changed pretty, pretty standard. So uh, I think uh, I entertain the motion. Um, I move to approve LA 23-2 as applied. Second. And so we have a, a motion by Commissioner McCutcheon and we have a second by Harrison. Any more discussion? We'll put it to a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Um, item number two, LA 23 8, David Charles Designs, 1340 Vine Place. Request variance for average lakeshore setback, 75 foot lakeshore setback, hardcover within the 75 foot setback, and rear yard setback. Ms. Nye. Good evening, Commissioners. Um, I'll be presenting 1345 Place. Uh, the applicant is proposing to demolish the existing home and rebuild on top of the existing foundation. The existing foundation is not conforming. Much of it is located in front of the 75 foot lakeshore setback and in front of the average lakeshore setback line. The existing home also does not meet the rear yard setback. The lot is substandard in size. It's about 0.66 acres uh, when the LR1B zoning district requires one acre. Um, the lot is also 
currently just over the maximum hardcover of 25%. The proposed home will be larger than the existing home and taller as well. It will be approximately seven feet taller uh, due to a steeper roof pitch. Um, and there's also portions of the home that are currently one story um, and a second story is being added. Uh, the current home has a detached two car garage um, the proposal is to demolish this and to build a three-car attached garage in a similar location. Um, this would add approximately 155 additional square feet of hardcover within the 75 foot setback. The last major difference uh, for the new home is a new front uh, porch addition. Um, it, uh, it stays in the same plane as the existing home um, but due to the angle of the lot um, it decreases the already non-conforming rear yard setback from 24 to 21 feet when 30 is required. In order for the applicant to construct the new home, they will need variances from lot area, average lakeshore setback, 75 foot lakeshore setback, hardcover within the 75 foot setback, and rear yard setback. The applicant has identified the property location on the inside corner of an inlet bay as a practical difficulty. The location and substandard size of the property result in a very small building envelope um, that is not large enough for a single family home to be constructed. The extreme setbacks uh, due to the lot's shape, size, and location are unique to the property. Uh, the applicant is choosing to build on top of an existing foundation to minimize impacts to the surrounding neighbors. Uh, the project will also um, bring the lot into conformance with hardcover, bringing the total down to approximately 23%. Uh, the applicant has provided supporting documentation relating the related to the actual practical difficulties and can be asked uh, for additional testimony if needed. Neighbor acknowledgement forms were included in the packet, uh, but no other public comment has been received. Uh, staff is supportive of this request and recommends approval of the requested variances due to the practical difficulties. Thank you. Any questions for staff? Aside from one story area becoming two stories and increased square footage in that regard, is there any expansion of the footprint beyond the existing foundation today? Yes, that would be um, the, the garage area. Um, I'll zoom in a little bit. Um, but there is a garage there today. It's just, it's right here. It's detached. And they're proposing to demolish it and build a garage in a similar location but have it attached. Um, so it's a slight increase in, in hardcover in that area, about just over 150 square feet. Um, and they'll be reducing the overall site with the hardcover though. Very good, thank you. Any more for staff? If the applicant is here and like to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and name and address for the record. Good evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, fellow commissioners. My name is David Swaver with David Charles Designs. Uh, address 18190, Janivar Court, Lakeville, Minnesota. Um, here on behalf of my clients, Ryan and Andrew have be done. And uh, Ms. and I did, a, did an excellent job of outlining what we're looking to do on this um, rather difficult property because of its location on the inlet um, and in the fact that it is really sandwiched between two other properties on the inside corner of the bay. Uh, the existing setback rules make it uh, nearly impossible to construct anything in conformance on this particular property. Um, the existing property is, is kind of fallen into disrepair and we feel that the improvements with the new structure that we're going to be building there will make for a much better property. You know, we're bringing the hardcover down to within conforming levels um, from a percentage standpoint. Um, that, not adding a larger footprint per se, but simply stacking uh, some square footage in a two-story fashion to pick up the additional area that the client is, is needing for their growing family. Um, attaching the garage also will be a much nicer improvement to the existing structure that's there. And uh, because of the location of the neighboring properties, uh, the neighbor to the northwest is significantly elevated over this property. 
uh, is looking down upon the property currently. Uh, so we're not going to be blocking any views with this additional square footage that we're adding. And the property to the southeast is well to the southeast and really not in any view corridor. Um, and we're not blocking any views of their home to the lake right now. So um, I will stand for any questions that you may have. But again, I appreciate Ms. Snag's great uh, presentation and the flexibility in working through these issues. Thank you. Any questions for the applicant? Seeing none, um, we can open up the public hearing. If anyone from the public would like to comment on this application, please approach the podium and state your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we'll bring it back up here for discussion and close the public comment. Any discussion? I think overall, I, I think practical difficulties are clearly established by the staff as well as the applicant. Um, I don't think that attaching them to what was a detached garage to a new construction, I don't think that's egregious. I, I don't really have an issue with that. And overall, I don't, I don't see any concern with the project, in my opinion. It looks like a, a great addition of the property and um, Getting the hardcover lower overall is a good, uh, it's a win-win. And I tend to agree. I would uh, entertain a motion if anyone has one. Make a motion to approve LA 23-8 at 1.40 Vine <coughs> Place as applied. I second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Let's vote on it. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to number three, LA 23-14. Yeah. <coughs> Matthew Johnson, 1007 Wildhurst Trail. Request a variance from the average lake shore setback. Requirement for the placement of a new home on a vacant lot. Staff. Thank you. Uh, this application is for the um, to be created blue lot um, with an address to be assigned 1007 Wildhurst Trail. Um, the existing home at 1003 Wildhurst Trail on the lot that is red um, is, is planned to remain and that is not part of this application. Um, the applicant is in the process of designing a new home for the blue lot at or near the 75 foot setback line as shown. Um, the orientation of the adjacent lakeshore um, property to the north at 4455, the top of the screen, um, West Branch Road, results in the average lakeshore setback line um, bisecting the center of the blue lot. Um, they are requesting an average lakeshore setback variance to allow construction up to the 75 foot setback. Approval of the proposed variance will be subject to Hennepin County accepting the proposed lot line rearrangement, which is in process. Um, and is planned to create the red and blue lot orientation. Planning Commission should treat the proposed blue lot as existing for the discussion. Um, the applicants have identified the unique lake channel orientation for both the blue lot and the adjacent lake shore property on West Branch Road to the north, creating difficulties. Um, they are in attendance this evening and should be asked for additional testimony regarding the practical difficulty. Um, staff agrees with the applicants that the unique orientation of the properties along the lakeshore channels create an extreme average lakeshore setback across the subject property, which is restricting development near the lake. Although the applicant's proposed location will likely not adversely impact views of the lake currently enjoyed by the owners of the West Branch property, it does not render the property unbuildable. There is a conforming building envelope on the property to support the applicant's proposed home footprint. The blue lot is situated at the end of a narrow channel off of the main lake. The surrounding properties also share this unique shoreline, although not the orientation. Uh, the neighboring home to the north um, fronts the lake via a different channel. The West Branch home is separated by approximately 550 feet from the subject lot. Sorry. From the proposed home location. Based on the location of the average lakes for subject line locating the home behind the average lakeshore setback may impact the applicant's views of the lake significantly. Staff has received requests to view the plans and fielded some questions from the public regarding this application, but did not receive any formal comments. 
Um, tonight, the Planning Commission should discuss whether or not the proposal fits within the character of the neighborhood, um, determine if the proposal is supported by practical difficulty considering there is a legal building envelope on the property, and discuss whether or not there is any Lakeview impact to consider um, on the northern property considering its distance from the proposed home. Staff recommends approval of the proposed variance for the average Lakeshore setback. Construction of the home up to the 75 foot setback should not impede the two neighboring properties' views of the lake. Approval of the variance should be contingent upon Hennepin County accepting the property line changes. Um, that is all I have. I do have the other exhibits that were included in the packet if you'd like them on the screens, but I can try to answer questions if you have any. Thank you. Thank you. Questions for staff? Just for the green line is? 75. 75. Part of one of the references where the lake is in this wet area, so it's yep, it's based on the survey location. They, survey just, location. Or they just overlaid the that line on the aerial photo for clarity. Right. So they're proposing to meet the 75. True. But it's the average that we're looking for the variance for. That's correct. Anyone else questions for staff? Oh. If the applicants here wish to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Commissioner, uh, Planning Commission, uh, Matt Johnson, uh, 1003 Wildhurst Trail, which would be the red lot indicated in there. Um, if I could ask staff to provide under my narrative, there's a, an illustration that I wanted to yep, I'll bring, that up. I'm sorry. bring attention to. So a little uh, history on this. This was, uh, there's, it, there's currently three uh, PIDs on this property. Um, this is a large uh, undeveloped chunk of land uh, that I purchased. Uh, and the neighbors had uh, interest in reducing the density at one point in this, between these two parcels. You know, there was uh, talk of putting seven, eight houses in there. Um, but on this east side, um, which is outlined in the purple or blue, red, and, and then you have to help me with whatever color I put on there. Red, and, and the red and orange. 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 Yeah. Um, so right now it has three IP, PIDs. I could configure it this way. And the reason I included this illustration is you can see what the average lakeshore setbacks would be for this site if I made it into three lots. You can see the white uh, line coming across there, which ultimately is forward of the 75 foot setback or thereabouts, or the yellow line, um, which is far ahead of the 75 foot setback. So um, in an effort to uh, reduce the density of this area, my proposal was to bring it down to two lots. And then in doing so, uh, the average lakeshore setback gets connected from the property to the north and then connects to my own property uh, that I also own. Um, if we can slide that down a little bit more, thank you. And then pushes that average lakeshore setback. And so um, the average lakeshore setback, uh, you know, that's in intent, uh, this is not what it was intended to do intended to ensure that there is a proper relationship with the lake and the neighbors. And I am that neighbor, first of all, because that's my property. And, um, but either way, uh, it seems fitting that this would be, the 75 foot setback should be uh, the reference point for the building on that lot. Any questions for the applicant? With the, where the white line is now, if you took the same house that you're planning on building, could you, could we meet all variances? I mean, with all code, putting behind the white line? Yes. Okay. Yep. That's not a question. So I have a question for staff. Is that, um, the top illustration, is that correct? How it's, um, how it's measured if they're two lots versus one? I've so never seen it applied that way. <clears throat> 
because the um, blue lot and this red lot are vacant, the average lakeshore setback is a measurement based on the occupied neighboring lakeshore lot. Um, so I, I, I think so. I haven't measured that. Wouldn't it be from the existing house, the so closest house? This, this right. house. In um, that configuration, the orange lot is not a lakeshore lot, so it doesn't come into play. Oh, and the immediate yeah, neighbor right. to the east is not a lakeshore lot, so it's two houses over. That sure. would determine oh, that. So that makes sense. That measurement. Yeah, and that's another thing that is interesting to this site. So the orange lot there, but the next property to the east of that, that is not a lakeshore lot. So it goes, even though they're right there, it's a, it's a real odd configuration as part of the hardship because the lake does a 90 degree turn, but then cuts off that one property from being a lakeshore lot. So it factors in on how the uh, ALS is measured. Any more questions for applicant or staff? If not, we'll open up the public hearing. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone from the public who'd wish to speak on this, please approach the podium. State your name and address for the record. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back up here for discussion. Who would like to start? I, can, I think that this one, um, I don't recall the address, but this brings back similar memories in the last six months of the, the two or three lots that were being divided that had a tennis court, I think, on one of them, and it came down to the, well, if we build on this lot first instead of the one we're proposing to build on, then it shifts, and it kind of was a game of, you know, which one gets built on first, or in this case, be divided into two or three lots and, and have it applied that way. So um, the illustration provided by the applicant, I think, is very helpful because it does certainly show a different, different picture. Um, of what would be there, two versus three lots, but um, in reality, we're looking at a two lot application and not three lots. Um, and so those are all things to consider. But I'd be curious to hear uh, other commissioners' feedback on it. Thank you. Anyone? I mean, I look at it, I mean, that's kind of it, is that it's two lots instead of three. If it was three, it would, we wouldn't be talking about this. Um, and so it's kind of like, you look at it, and the one house is extreme on the west side, and so since they're combining, it's considered lakeshore lot. But if they didn't do that, it wouldn't be lakeshore lot, and they have no problem. So it's kind of like where it's um, where the proposed um, house is being, uh, where it's located now. I guess I think that makes a lot of sense. I don't think it's too far ahead where it's too close, um, and I think it kind of uh, as you look at the uh, neighborhood to the south. They're all about that distance from the lake. And so I, I think it kind of fits the character of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it goes back to what's the intent of that ordinance. Was it, and, and it's clearly to help with sight lines and the proposed placement, I don't think, creates an issue with those sight lines. And, uh, yeah. yeah. I've actually been home to this area somewhat recently this winter looking at another property and so I think know this area very well and that it is probably save some trees by putting the house more to the east than you would towards the west. Anyone else? Mr. Lou? Uh, I think the staff has done a really thorough job. I think they've given us a lot of good information. I think they've, uh, a combination of both between the applicant's care and diligence to make sure that we have a buildable envelope uh, between staff and the applicant's efforts to try to position the house so that it does not obstruct uh, any other lake views or natural views to any other neighbors. And then the distance, the 500 foot separation. Uh, I'm in favor of this. I think that we still have a county to 
to chime in on this yet because of the subdivisions a lot, but I'm, I'm in favor of this. I, I would tend to feel that I could approve it. All that being said, would you like to I, make I a motion? I would make a motion. Okay. To approve LA 23 I'll second that. 107 and a one six. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Um, Commissioner Libby and Commissioner Kramer. Any more discussion? Okay, let's vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Item number four, LA 2315, Swanson Homes, 3017 North Shore Drive. Request for preliminary plat approval to create two lot subdivision in the LR1B zone district. Ms. Oakton? Yes, so in front of you tonight, an applicant uh, is requesting a preliminary plat approval to subdivide 3.57 acres into two buildable lots. Um, the applicant is proposing to subdivide 3017 North Shore Drive. Uh, there is currently one house on the property, and the applicant is proposing to demo a portion of that existing house in order to meet um, the side yard uh, setback requirements established by a new shared property line between lot one and lot two. Um, the applicant has indicated that uh, they will remove any existing encroachments, including that existing well generator, AC, and any patio associated with the existing home. Um, up on the screen in front of you, uh, I have annotated lot one as a red lot and lot two uh, as the green lot uh, for reference. Uh, for the proposal, um, it is consistent with the comprehensive plan and the LR1B1 family Lakeshore Residential Zoning Districts. Both lots will meet the one acre size and 140 foot width of requirement in that zoning district. Uh, the proposed lots are, um, the staff feels they are consistent with the character of the neighborhood, and the proposed project does not uh, trigger the requirements for a conservation design. All drainage and utility easements uh, will meet uh, current city standards and have been um, preliminary reviewed by the city engineer. Uh, the property is within the MUSA, um, and it is served by city sewer and private well. Uh, the engi city engineer did note that separate uh, sewer connections will be required uh, for that new lot. Uh, lot two is being referenced as the new lot. And the existing home um, has a well currently located in that proposed lot two, and that will need to be uh, addressed, and separate wells will be required. Um, Minnehaha Creek provided comment that a two lot subdivision does not trigger their permitting requirements, but they may require permitting at time of demo and of construction. Um, Henry County also noted, uh, has not submitted comments yet for this application. They did provide me with an update this morning, noting that they are drafting a comment letter, but uh, they have no major concerns regarding this application at this time. Um, so that letter will be uh, submitted and addressed before this goes to council. Um, uh, the applicant is proposing a shared driveway access off of North Shore Drive. Staff is uh, noting that a driveway easement, easement and maintenance agreement uh, should be required with this plat. Um, regarding uh, a potential um, trail easement, uh, the 2040 uh, parks map indicates an existing on-street on -street trail along North Shore Drive. Um, there is a 2040 regional trail uh, system, like a research corridor identified by the county um, along this uh, North Shore Drive corridor abutting the property. Staff recommends a 10-foot easement should be obtained along North Shore Drive to support the creation of that potential regional uh, trail corridor. Um, additionally, uh, the Parks and Open Space uh, Trail Plan, as part of the Orono Comprehensive Plan, does not specify the need for a neighborhood park in this location. Uh, as there is no defined park need uh, uh, at, in this location. Absent the need for park, de uh, park land dedication, a park dedication fee in lieu of land would seem appropriate following um, city ordinance. Uh, no public comments have been received uh, for this application at this time. So as a recommendation, staff recommends approval of this subdivision following the additional requirements before final plat, which would include a driveway easement and maintenance agreement, a 10-foot trail easement along North Shore Drive, and then um, additionally, per city engineer, additional uh, separate sewer connections and then demo permits would be required as well. 
Um, I'd be happy to answer any questions. I believe the applicant is here and can speak to the project. So to summarize, one lot becoming two, the current house is gonna be modified so that it's conforming on the lot one. Yep, um, will you show the demo plan that I have in there? Uh, the shaded blue areas are the proposed areas to be demoed. There is a garage space on the street side of the house that will be demoed with a potential small um, addition in the future. And then um, there is some patio uh, kind of space on the lake side of this house that the applicants are proposing to remove. Thank you. Any other questions for staff? This is weird. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Um, a lot of questions here, but I don't know how to articulate them. So it's just demoing the house to make uh, another lot. And they're right to do, I guess. Um, it's the first one that I've seen. I've been doing this for a while. Um, is there any, since we're having, we, one thing that we deal with a lot is a regular um, lots, and this is, we can bring this back to our discussion when we talk about it, but when they are proposing this, working with staff, was there ever an attempt to try to make the lot lines square up with the lake? Um, there was discussion, and you can, that would be a good question to propose to the applicant as to why they shaped it the way they did. Um, there is a requirement that uh, the lot width be at the OHW or the, at the 929 floor contour as well as the 75 foot setback contour is required for all lake lots. So I believe that's what you're seeing in the lake yard is the straight line. Yeah. And then um, the applicant can speak to why they chose to design uh, the new shared property line as they did. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any more questions for staff? If the applicant's here or would like to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Hello everyone, my name is Blake Swanson. Thank you for your time tonight. I'm with uh, Swanson Homes at 1360 Hamilton Road in China. And uh, in front of you here, this, this staff has done a great job of laying out for you as a conforming plan. We spent a lot of time and effort um, thoughtfully designing, especially given into account the the home that was built there, which we actually built in the 2018-2017 timeframe. Um, to answer um, Mr. McCutcheon's question, the reason why the lot line goes around the home the way that it does is because that's right where the kitchen and the mudroom is. And so going straight line through there and also meeting the other requirements would be a substantial slice through a, a very critical part of the home. Um, I guess backing up a little bit, um, we, like I said, we've been working very diligently with staff to try and come up with a plan that meets all of the requirements and everything of, this, of the ordinance. I think we've, we've done so, and as also, like they mentioned earlier in the comments, it's consistent with a lot of the other properties along this stretch. Um, I guess that no other comments at this time, but is there any questions I can help answer? Do you know the rough on lot two, the lot that will be created, do you know what the rough building envelope would be as far as footprint of a home that you could get on there within the the setbacks not requiring a, a variance or anything? Yeah, so the, the building envelope, I forget, down to the foot, I think it's a, it's about approximately uh, 100 feet wide. Okay. Which again, pretty consistent with a lot of the others along the stretch. And I see staff zoomed in there and you showed the setback, so thank you. <coughs> Any other questions for that? Was there any um, discussion when you're, I'm sure you're working through a lot of scenarios, but was there ever a thought of like sharing driveways? Did that ever come up or like have the second I, lot actually have an easement to share that driveway? They, well, are, they are asking for that. Oh, you are? Yeah, yeah that's part of the plan. And we did that because it was a county road. Um, so we didn't, we thought it'd be better to have one access for safety um, than having two separate driveways. Uh, thank you. Anything else? We can open the public hearing if there's no more questions. Um, if anyone from the public would like to con comment um, on this application, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record.
Art Commissioners, my name is Catherine Callis, and I live at 3048 North Shore Drive. I'm the home, home, home owner across the street. And I have clarifying questions as well based on this proposal. My first one is in relation to the property line being consistent with most properties that go parallel to each other versus a jig-jag happening in the property lines. In addition with how this is situated, that property line on the lake shore runs about 25% in lot one's home. So if the homeowner put up trees, a fence, it would be in the view um, directly where the proposed kitchen, etc., is for um, the home on lot one. It also would be helpful to us in the neighborhood to be able to see what's being proposed on lot two to understand how is it going to be situated. Again, on these multi-million dollar homes, having this um, easement for one driveway going into the home, does that cause difficulties as well for the homeowners for this type of uh, home structure and the cost of these buildings? The other is that it's not clear to me on the application. It does state that, um, can I get to my notes, that James Blue is the owner and the address is W. Donald Larson Trust. There is no one currently living in this home since it's been sold, nor, is, nor was it intended to be a living home for someone per the neighborhood discussion. It was seen as a flip that would take place in the neighborhood. Um, those of us who live in the neighborhood enjoy this space, enjoy the size of the homes and the properties and how it's been configured over the years. And those are my questions that I would like the commission to think about in relation to this pre-planning before it is um, designed into two properties. Thank you for listening to me and I appreciate your clarification on that. Thank you for your comments. Anyone else from the public? My name is Jeff Sislav, 1380 Dryer Street. And I don't live in the neighborhood I'm about a mile away, but even after the demo, will the lot lines of the existing house be reasonable or within the Still seems like they're not cutting out a whole lot to keep the setback from the lot line between the two homes far enough from the existing house. How much of the house are they gonna, the whole thing seems a little strange to me, but um, I did, that's just a question I had. So I'll just sit down and listen. Thank you. Anyone else wish to speak on this one? Seeing none, we'll bring it back up here for discussion. Um, I think maybe first of all, some of the questions on this open, maybe you could answer that. I, I think they're proposing a conforming setback. Yep, um, let's see here. Do you want to go back to just the first image that we showed of the two lot lines? Yeah, and zoom in a little bit. The zoning district for this area is a 10 foot setback. Um, so as proposed, they are um, removing enough of the garage and on the street side of the existing home and the patio on the lake side in order to meet that setback. So as they have applied it today, they are showing a conforming structure relating to uh, setbacks. Um, they are also conforming to, it will be conforming to hardcover and structural coverage as well. So the house will be a conforming structure after those demos happen if this preliminary plat were to be approved. Thank you. Um, any discussion here from commissioners um, about the project and specifically about this uh, wandering property line or any other points that you'd like to make on this one? I guess, you know, what we see a lot coming here is we always talk about the building envelope. And so if we're taking a lot and we're subdividing it and we're trying to think of the next steps where let's, we have another house that's proposing to be in this lot and where are they gonna put that house? And um, to me, it's just like, well, right in the middle lot, wherever that number two is, is probably the most logical place for it. But I don't know what's now, 
and it's probably in there. Sorry, my, my computer's kind of locking up. But do we have? Is there a diagram to show the building envelope that's possible on lot two? So, um, I can uh, clarify a little bit. I did not annotate the building envelope. If you want to go back to that image, please. Um, but the dotted line right set inside of the, of the green that's being highlighted right here are the conforming setbacks. Okay, so that's. So that whole enough. area is considered the conforming envelope. The average lakeshore setback line is addressed on there, and just in front, lakeward of that, is the 75 foot setback. Okay, so then they only got to be 10 feet. So that's so they actually do have, um, and that's probably I don't know the math. That's probably at least 130 feet. I line. believe um, the applicant noted around 100 foot width, roughly. Yep, and um, I believe also I have a aerial image in the presentation folder that might show a, a higher level of the neighborhood. Um, so the property we're talking about right there is on the channel, and then um, you can see the neighboring properties kind of surrounding as well for kind of a comparison. And the yellow lines, the light yellow lines, are uh, estimated property lines. Yeah, I just, uh, just for speaking topics here for the commission, um, you know, obviously this came to us for, from fresh if this big lot where they subdivided that we would not subdivide it that way. Instead, you let me just cut it in half, right, or something like that. But I guess it's in the year to one acre minimum, so it is conforming, um, and they're going to demo the existing house to make sure it's conforming. And so um, I guess that's where we'll have to have to see if there's any concerns with the, with the shape. My biggest thing is the shape lot. I think. And um, I think there's enough to having the driveway. I think that's a smart way to have the easement there because that obviously for safety reasons and just to kind of um, allow the, the new homeowner of uh, lot two uh, more options when they're when they're building at home. And so fits character there a little bit better. Um, so those are my thoughts. I'm just struggling with them. Um, and if you look and if looking at this point of view, you're kind of biased and going. Doesn't really make sense, but if you look at the zoomed out of the neighborhood, well, then the other lots are, you know, you can see that that ten foot setback. Their their the houses are pretty pretty close together. So I don't know. Those are my thoughts when I, when I first looked at it. I don't know if that helps or hurts anything. But. I think that was my concern as well. That's why I asked what the building envelope would be, and I you know, we don't have a, a house floor plan in front of us here to look at the foundation size, but I feel like the hundred feet is is adequate. For that, um, I I always struggle to consider denying something like this when someone's asking to develop land in a conforming man manner. All of what they're looking to do is conforming to our existing ordinances and things like that, as far as block area and width and things like that. So I just struggle to tell people they can't develop land in the manner in which it's it's slated to be developed. Um, I did also note too in the packet that the lot directly to the west of this one. Um, is 0.61 of an acre, so this, you know, would not be the smallest lot in the area, um, and would kind of fit the character in the neighborhood, ranging in kind of the middle of, of the sizes of overall lots in the area. Um, I think it's a, a thoughtful subdivision. I like the fact that they are doing the common driveway for safety and aesthetics. I think it fits the character of the neighborhood. And um, it's definitely not a straight uh, property line, but there's a lot of crooked property lines in Warren. <laughs> and um, I, you know, you can see why this one's required. So I'll definitely be for this. Commissioner Levy? I, I think the staff's suggestion about uh, having a shared driveway requiring some sort of a maintenance agreement or something that would be prudent uh, moving forward because as we know, as history moves by, the first people that build or buy and live in this house might not have the same sentiments uh, as the next owner. And if there's something that's uniform and accepted uh, that's needed, uh, I think that eliminates a lot of potential problems in the future. I've, I've had a number of circumstances where I've been involved in sales where there have been shared driveways. And sometimes driveways themselves kind of move somewhere else. And 25 years later, everybody's trying to remember where the driveway really was, but I think with a maintenance agreement and something attached to the property with, within its uh, permitted structure, because this uh, 2040 
plan guides this for one acre, so we're we're beyond that uh, on, on the first site. I, I would tend to be in favor of, of this. Thank you. Yeah, I would just note that, on that along that same stretch of road, there are other shared driveway situations, which I think do make sense when you're on a county road like that. Um, <clears throat> overall, I'm in, I'm in favor of it. I mean, it's it's meeting all the check marks for what the code requires for a subdivision. Um, so I'd entertain a motion if there's no further discussion. I'm making a motion to approve LA 23-00015 at 3017 North Shore Drive with the stipulation that a driveway and driveway maintenance easement be included, trail easement, drainage and utility easement, and additional sewer connection as noted by city staff in a recommendation as applied. I have a motion, do I have a second? Second. I have a second by Commissioner Erickson. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes. Um, that moves us to uh, number five, LA 23 16. Carolina Cano, um, on behalf of Kishav Properties LLC, 2160 West Edible Boulevard West. Request for a conditional use permit for a class two restaurant within the B1 district. Ms. Nye. Good evening again. The applicant is proposing to open a new restaurant at 2160 YZF Boulevard West. The existing building is a multi-tenant building with a variety of uses, including a gas station, salon, laundromat, a groomer, and professional offices. The applicant is proposing to take over two vacant spaces and remodel the interior to support a restaurant. The proposed restaurant is a Mexican restaurant that proposes to serve liquor which classifies this restaurant as a class two restaurant per the city code. Class two restaurants are um, a conditional use in the B1 zoning district. The proposed restaurant is approximately 1,700 square feet with about 900 square feet of public space. The proposed hours are 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Um, Monday through Sunday. No exterior modifications are proposed at this time. The business will be able to obtain a sign permit as long as they meet uh, the city sign code. Uh, the multi-tenant building has a shared parking lot. Uh, the proposed business has allocated um, 17 parking spaces, uh, some of which are in the front of the building and some in the rear. Uh, 11 spa parking spaces are, requi are required per the amount of public uh, space in the building in the tenant space. Six of the parking spaces in the rear are not striped, um, but are intended to be used for overflow um, or employee parking. Staff recommends that these parking spaces are striped as well. Um, Planning Commission can discuss that. Uh, the applicant is proposing to use um, or to rent their own garbage and recycling dumpsters um, that will be stored next to the other recycling and garbage um, dumpsters for the other tenants of the building. Uh, the city code requires that these containers are closed, uh, but we do not require um, necessarily having a trash enclosure. Um, staff also recommends the Planning Commission discuss um, the possibility of adding a condition of a trash enclosure if the garbage area ever becomes a nuisance or an issue. Uh, again, that's something the Commission can discuss. Uh, staff overall finds that the proposed restaurant meets all applicable uh, conditional use permit regulations. Uh, the use is compatible with the surrounding area and is appropriate for the district and for the future land use uh, <coughs> for this site. The applicant is here and available um, for additional information or to answer questions. Um, the business narrative, floor plan, and parking plan um, are in your packet, but I can also bring them up on screen. Staff recommends approval of the requested conditional use permit, um, subject to uh, the possible condition to strike the parking lot. Quick question. Um, I didn't see it in the packet, but the location of the restaurant um, and how it relates to those parking spots. I believe, and, and the applicant can speak okay. um, probably better to that because they are taking over two spaces, so I don't want to um, mistake that. Okay. Any other questions for staff? 
say none, um, if the applicant's here, wish to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record, please. Hi, Council members. My name is Gustavo Prano Gatnica, and the address is 985 Old Palm Lake Road. To answer your question, the reason why we occupy the spaces that are available is that we are planning on taking those two uh, available leases and it will be more optimal. Thank you. And uh, I would also like to introduce ourselves. So unfortunately, the uh, my sister, which is Carolina Cano, was unfortunately not able to be here. She got COVID, but I'm able to fill in her spot. Uh, we are a family of seven. We've lived in Morno for over 20 years, so we have that sense of community as well as that sense of family hospitality and as well as having a family operated restaurant. And um, we would just like to say that thank you for listening and I also have more. We, we plan on building a, a strong network within our families and our friends. And we also have business partners <coughs> that are strictly based in Wisconsin, so they're not really participating in anything besides just being like a shareholder. Um, I, we really want to place an emphasis on family operated. I know um, the majority of the businesses in Orno, in Orno are like Subway, Domino's, uh, they're mainly fast food places. And we intend to make um, a Mexican cuisine and uh, a memorable dining experience. Um, the uh, to better understand like our business or what we're trying to propose, it is Talvera. So it comes from the 14th, hundred century Spanish queen Talvera in the province of Spain, who was brought to Mexico and used uh, of decorations, of, which is how we plan on going. So that is a bright, milky, glossy finish, and it tends to be colorful. Well, um, we plan on doing the operating hours between 11 a.m. and 10 p.m. So if you guys are wondering, like, how does that interfere with any of the business? We tend on having peak hours at 7 p.m., which by then most of the op op other operating businesses around us are closed. And we estimate to have around 12 employees with the employees carpooling, so to minimize the amount of parking spaces. Um, another thing that we would like to take into account that we're accommodating for is the parking spaces. We fully understand that some of the parking spaces are not um, fully striped, so we're communicating with the leaseor to see how we can overcome this little problem that we have, whether that be we pay or it comes out of the lease, etc. And um, I would just like to thank you guys for your time and to hear our proposal. Any questions? For I, I do have a question, if you don't mind. Of course. Uh, this perhaps is more falls on the responsibility of the landlord, uh, but I, I cannot see from the illustrations that we have, I can't count how many uh, other abled or handicapped parking spots they are. Do you have any idea? There's, uh, there's one proposed uh, from, from the ones that they have designated for their use, there is one ADA space. Okay. As far as the entire parking lot, um, I see a few just from the aerial, but I'm not sure if you know that exact well, time. No, I didn't expect that you would. I thought maybe that'd be a question for the, for the landlord, but mm -hmm. with one space with 1,700 square feet, and the number of people I can be seated there, are we in, uh, would, they, would they be in compliance with ADA? That is a review done by our building official. It is, um, okay. Yeah, so if they're anticipating one through their uh, business plan right now, if more are needed or desired, that can be addressed through, through our uh, building official at time of permitting. Um, but if that's uh, also, it would be mindful maybe to make that a condition to ensure that it's addressed as part of this conditional use well, permit. You put it well, because my thought was that to try to ask you for other able uh, and, and disabled people to have a generous amount of handicapped parking. And I like the idea of the striping because you are going to be serving alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.
Thank you. Any other questions? Any questions? Okay, let's open up the public hearing. Thank you. Um, anyone from the public who is here wish to speak on this? Please approach the podium. Uh, Richie Anderson, uh, been an Orono resident for a long time. Uh, I don't have a dog in this fight, but I just want to uh, talk to the character of these uh, folks that are running this gas station. It's a local gas station, first class, great food already, and I just, uh, they, they're just solid citizens. Uh, and if you don't use their place, you should. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Seeing none, we'll bring it back up here for discussion. Um, who would like to start? Uh, I can, I'll, I'll start. <laughs> um, looking at the, the parking seems to be maybe the big kind of question here, and I'm assuming the 17 dedicated spots, they're, they're allowed to use the overflow spots for the other businesses. I'm guessing there's no other dedicated spots per se, and maybe no, and, and I think um, there's an over, it's a shared parking lot, so I think they're just trying to show that this is minimally what they'll have, um, but as he mentioned, um, the hours of the other businesses really complement each other, so staff really isn't worried about the amount of parking that um, they're proposing um, just because there's the use of all of the entire parking lot. Right. Um, and overall, I'm in favor for of it. I think it looks like a good proposal, and um, I don't see any issues. But I'd like to hear from the other commissioners. I don't see any issues with it. I don't think we should make it too easy. I think we should sweat because we'll get the sister mad at them. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think it's a, a business friendly town, so uh, this is great. Uh, I can't wait. I hope I wish uh, you guys the best of luck. Um, I, I think you're right, pointing out that the, the parking spots, you know, with the different types of businesses, I, I think they can make it work. Um, and if it gets too successful, they can always, you know, find some more other solutions. But you know, don't put the cart before the horse, I guess. But otherwise, I'm in favor of it. Any more discussion or yeah, somebody? Like, uh, uh, I, this is an excellent. Uh, application that I'm supportive of it. There is one detail that was mentioned in the staff report which I would like to emphasize uh, and that is uh, the question that was raised should uh, the uh, dumpsters be enclosed uh, should enclosures be made uh, that hide those and I'd like to give a little history uh, since I have as owned a commercial property in this corridor in Long Lake. But this is an area where uh, Long Lake is on one side of the road and Orono is on the other side of the road. And most people driving by have no idea, you know, where the line is or anything. But uh, I think it was, uh, and I served on the Long Lake uh, Planning Commission for five years before I started here. But uh, I think, and in my Memory's a little rusty on this exact point, but uh, uh, Long Lake started requiring dumpster enclosures, I think in the early 1990s, if I'm not mistaken, and uh, uh, which uh, required some adjustment from some of the, a lot of the property owners had been living without them for quite a while before that. But uh, uh, so uh, compliance was, uh, did not happen overnight. But, uh, and then part of that effort to gain compliance uh, resulted in the uh, Long Lake Planning Commission got together on a Saturday afternoon and did a walking tour of the entire retail and industrial neighborhood and, and took notes as to who had enclosures and who didn't. And, uh, but then since that time, of course, it's got, gotten to be accepted over a period of time. And one excellent example of that is across the road, um, Carboni's Pizza uh, was just a few years ago, it had been a printing shop, they converted it into the restaurant, and as part of that process, they uh, built a brand new uh, dumpster enclosure at the rear of the building, 
and uh, it, it's uh, I think should be a model as to uh, what we should be looking for uh, in, in this or other restaurant locations. Uh, they've got uh, the uh, recycling bin, the uh, regular garbage, uh, that part of it is uh, 24 by 10. And then they got another portion next to it is probably about 10 by 10. And I'm not sure what it is, but it, it might be the part that where they put the oil from the cooking and so on, I'm not sure. But uh, I, I feel that that should be uh, part of the requirement for uh, not just this location, but any other uh, restaurants that come up. I think that's interesting feedback. And I'll, I'll piggyback off of something you just said at the end there, not just this restaurant, but any restaurant. And I think that's where I struggle to look at this application and, and try and apply the enclosure when we have other existing businesses, uh, restaurant businesses within our city. I think that that would be a broader discussion for a potential ordinance review or something like that rather than trying to apply it to one singular application. Um, but that's just kind of my opinion. Thanks for those comments. I do think as a CUP, we have the ability to require it. I'm kind of, I'm glad you guys brought up the dumpster stuff because I was actually liking the way staff proposed it. I see a lot of times when they're forced to put a dumpster enclosure in, especially in the winter, those dumpsters sit outside of the enclosure because they can't open the gates to the enclosure. And sometimes it can actually be a nuisance. Um, so I guess I would be in support of seeing if it becomes a nuisance first and then requiring it maybe later. But I, that's my opinion. Um, any other discussion? I'd, uh, if anyone has a motion, I'd entertain one. Let's see, I, uh, I'm in favor for it. I think that's a great discussion with, with uh, the trash, but I, but I agree. Let's um, walk the board around. Um, I will uh, put a motion to approve LA 23 16 as applied. Second. So I have a motion and a second. Any more discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. That brings us to item six, LA 23-17. Murphy and Company Design, 746 Tonkaboy Road, request variance for hardcover driveway width and rear yard setback on accessory building. Ms. Nye. Proposing to renovate the existing home at 746 Tonkwa Road. The property currently contains a detached, non conforming garage near the home. The applicant is proposing to demolish that. The applicant is proposing to construct a new three car garage near the street. Because the proposed garage has, gra has its garage doors facing the street, the setback requirements increase from 10 feet, that would be for just an, uh, a regular accessory structure, to 30 feet due to the garage doors facing the street. Um, the proposed garage is 10 feet from the rear property line. Due to the proximity of the garage, the driveway does not have an opportunity, opportunity to taper down to a maximum allowed width of 20 feet. The applicant is requesting variances for rear yard setback for the accessory building um, from 30 feet down to 10 feet, and um, an additional variance for driveway width to allow a 34 foot driveway width where a 20 foot is required, or is 20 foot is the maximum. Additionally, the applicant is requesting a variance from overall hardcover. The current property is over the allowed maximum hardcover at approximately 35%. The applicant is proposing to remove hardcover primarily through the removal of the existing driveway to bring the total down to 52%. Um, because the total hardcover is still over 25%, a variance is needed. The applicant has, ident has identified the significant topographical changes on the property as a practical difficulty. There is a steep grade change from the street to the house, and the current driveway is unsafe, especially in the winter months. 
constructing a new detached garage closer to the street alleviates those issues. Staff is in agreement with the listed practical difficulties and is supportive of the overall hardcover reduction. Staff recommends approval, however, would like the Planning Commission to discuss the need uh, for a three-bay garage versus a two-bay uh, detached garage. A two-bay garage could further reduce hardcover and reduce the requested variance for driveway width. Uh, the applicant is available uh, to answer questions, and um, we have not received any public comment. Uh, staff recommends approval of the request of variance. Any questions for staff? Seeing none, if the applicants here wish to discuss, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Uh, Daniel Mills with Murphy Design. Questions? Question Libby? Have, have you had a discussion with your immediate adjoining neighbors about these changes? Our client has been in contact with them. Uh, my understanding is that they are both out of town for the winter and do not winter here and were not comfortable signing any support of it until they were able to see the property in person this year. Okay. Any other questions? Matt, let's uh, open up the public hearing. If anyone's here to speak on this, please approach the podium. State your name and address for the record. <clears throat> Hello, my name is Bruce Lee. Uh, we own, my wife and I own the property to the north of this. We have a shared driveway easement uh, that would be completely uh, encroached upon if this uh, retaining wall goes up the way it's proposed. If you look, if you can see where there's a retaining wall, there's a, uh, northwesterly angle, if you want to point it out. I believe the easement goes from that corner point, which is a retaining uh, wall, uh, foot high, in the 15 feet and all the way up to the road. And it's a mutually shared easement. Uh, so it looks like we still would have access to my property. However, <coughs> when we back out of my garage, we back into that. Um, northerly, easterly portion of that easement. So we are going to be greatly affected by a wide garage and then a retaining wall that chews up probably two-thirds of that easement. I didn't know about the meeting tonight. I sent you guys all an email stating kind of the same things I'm talking about now. So my apologies for the late, but uh, nobody's talked to me about this. The neighbor didn't call me. Um, I literally found out about it about 30 minutes ago, so I'm a little out of pocket. So, your property is 746, Tonko? 740. 
from the board to the north. So we have a shared driveway agreement. Uh, and it does come down at a steep angle, and a lot of that top angle is the only way to get to my property. I don't have, I don't have any access because of that eight foot drop directly into my driveway. Thank you. Sure. Well, maybe before you sit down, oh, go ahead. Maybe you go ahead. I just wanted to mention that I did get your message. Oh, thank you. And that prompted me to ask the question we asked. Yeah, I, I did not get it. I'm not taking sides. Yep. Oh, I appreciate it. Yeah, I mean, is the, so is there any changes, and this drive is a little bit complicated, is there any changes to the existing driveway? Um, Further drawing. There's an well, existing the easement, driveway here that's going to be removed. Yeah, so a good portion of the easement is going to be gone, and that is bagging out space from my garage to back around and then give up the driveway. And especially in the wintertime, it's pretty important to have kind of a run at it because of that steep angle. Yeah, and just because you lived there uh, for a period of time, uh, I imagine in snow removal, you definitely leverage that as well. Uh, I've actually paid for all snow removal uh, over the years. that We've owned it for 20 years, okay. uh, but we've always pushed the snow onto my property. So we, I would- From going to your order property? Yes. Okay. So ultimately, the way this is proposed, your, your driveway is getting smaller, the shared driveway. Uh, a lot smaller, yes. Well, Anyone else? So I'm Karen Weathers. I live at 750 Tonkwa, so the property to the south. Uh, we've got no issues with it. We've not talked to them, but um, looks like it's conforming from our point of view and we don't have any issues. Thank you. Anyone else from the public wish to speak? Seeing none, we'll close the. Yeah. Seeing none, we'll close the public comment. Bring it back up here for discussion. Um, I can start with. I guess I'd like to address the the comment about the easement there, and I guess seeing the aerial, um, that is the only access to the neighboring property, is what it appears to be. Is that has there been any analysis done on this by staff at all with this easement and? Um, uh, we weren't aware that it would, because we saw that there was still access to their property. Um, we thought it was adequate access. Mm -hmm. uh, we always recommend that the applicant re reaches out to uh, the neighboring properties, and we hadn't received any comment. Um, so we're learning about it at the same time um, you are, that there it will impact their um, turnaround. Okay. Um, um, in the agenda packet, there's a document submitted by the applicant that was believed that's got a drawing of a car and a driveway in the house and the proposed lawn and things like that. And there's a driveway easement that's called out that, if I'm reading it correctly, has arrows pointing to that and, uh, and it shows where, if I'm understanding it correctly and it's accurate, that you know where the that one there on the, the top left corner there where the asphalt driveway is up right there, if you zoom in, Right uh, on that top left corner there, right there where your mouse was, it says driveway easement right there, and then the arrow is pointing to the left and down to the right. Right, yeah, there's um, there's the easement part right here. So I guess my reaction, not having all the details of what that easement is and everything else, um, maybe it's just clear from multiple people and, and this document that appears there's an easement there. And I, struggle to support something that would encroach upon an easement that uh, is a governing document to two different parcels and not something that we're a, a party to. Can I make one comment? Or is it not open to the public anymore? Yeah, we closed the public hearing. Um, okay. it, I, it, come, go ahead, come on, come on up. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Todd Irvin, I'm with Keenan and Zwayman. Uh, we're the landscape architects and contractors on the project. It was my, there is a, also a line kind of, I think, buried right under that proposed edge of driveway line that we're showing there that was shown, drawn at an angle. So it was my 
my assumption that that was kind of the edge of the easement. So we, we took the driveway right to that point and still allowed, I think it's a 14 foot wide driveway entrance point there, which felt like it, it was adequate. If there needs to be additional pavement left in that lower right hand corner of the easement area there for back out space, which we didn't, I guess, take into account or it was hard to study because we don't know the, exactly where the neighbor's garage is, we could certainly look at doing that. I think that's the issue is being able to kind of back into that space to get out. Um, yeah, hearing from the neighbor, it seems like that might be one of the issues. It, the way it sits today is the entire easement asphalt or? Uh, I don't know if you have the existing a lot of the asphalt that's there, as my assumption was, was to get the the previous property owner into their house, right? Because their their attached or their detached garage, which is very close to the house down there, most of that pavement looked like it was intended to get people down to the garage. So if it's in terms of back out space to the neighbor, um, it looked to me like they would have had enough space to back out and pull out back out onto the road going forward, but you know, we're open to suggestions to make it workable for both parties and everything. So. Thank you. Yeah, I'm thinking, you know, I think we drive by this a lot. Um, at least I do. And the parking in this whole this whole street's an issue, especially with the elevation drops. You have some garages right on top and then this one here being the bottom. So that's a real delicate puzzle piece from neighbor to neighbor about um, getting access uh, to their house safely. Um, one thing I'm looking at it, and, and probably not enough, not enough real estate on top before it drops. It's like you almost, if you could rotate that garage 90 degrees so that instead of backing out in the street, you kind of back into the other neighbor's driveway. I don't know if that was ever a consideration when drawing it. I don't know if there's enough room, but did you follow? You felt like you can put it for you. This one's complicated, so I think you guys have to come back and forth here. With, do you have enough space to do that, or was that considered? It was considered. Um, again, there's a lot of grade change there, so what we would have had to do was push the garage to the north side and use the high grade going to that south property, and it would have made the garage kind of extend almost to where that existing garage is. And we felt like that would just be a really big impediment on the neighboring property because you have two full stories of garage there. And you'd be in their easement, and you'd not be, in the road. Yeah. You'd be in their easement or right on their easement. Um, okay. Just keeping it up towards the road keeps the massing with the grade and keeps the impacts on the neighbors minimized. Okay. And the goal is to try to create a little more green space outside the home. Yeah, I'm just looking at any knobs or levers we can find. Like we'd almost, as a commission, um, sacrifice hard cover for safety. Like if this is somewhere where it will it'll be turning and there's a bunch of winds and the neighbor, because it's a shared driveway, so you think of the hard cover there as like, well, the calculation's there, but it's really being shared between two neighbors. And from a safety point of view, you know, there's always these trade-offs, but I was just curious if, but it sounds like even if you did rotate it, there's still not enough space to do it. And, yep. and, and that's actually what I was showing the drive for the car here, because we talked with staff and felt like it was important to show that we could turn a car around without getting onto the public road. Right. more discussion up here um, and maybe maybe it'd be helpful if we break this down into pieces um, this type of garage because it's loading facing the street is requiring a 30 foot setback but they're proposing a 10 foot, 10 foot setback um, but looking at the contours of this lot this seems like a logical place to put that garage but I do not like the idea that we're affecting the neighbors safety and turnaround ability. Um, so if it's an easy change to keep that asphalt the way it was or almost the way it was, I could be supportive of that. Um, how, how does, I'd like to hear how the other commissioners feel about this type of garage with a 10 foot setback versus a 30 um, as far as the safety goes for 
backing out onto the road. Um, and again, we're seeing a, a passenger vehicle, and we're not seeing a truck or a UPS vehicle or anything like that on this. That was exactly what I was just going to say, because it works fine assuming that these clients own three passenger cars. I mean, that's the one that buys the house with three pickup trucks or SUVs, I guess. Um, so there is some of that concern. I don't know how maybe a you know, delivery truck could just kind of pull in parallel across the paver driveway area there and then pull back out onto the road in that manner rather than you know, turning it at a 90. Um, but that was my concern as well. It appears that the passenger vehicle can be turned around to hold up a larger vehicle um, in the event that someone ever changed vehicles or sells a home and you only have a larger vehicle. Anyone else? Commissioner Libby? I just feel that staff has given some guidance in the uh, empirical person chapter of uh, section 78-1681 at the end of their paragraph where it makes it quite evident that uh, if there's a 20 foot width is permitted that the existing property has an existing shared driveway with the neighbor that will partially need to remain. The partially needs to remain seems to be the technical question because being able to support one practical difficulty to create another one doesn't seem to be a constructive way of getting to an answer. So I think that because the point was made when the applicant had an opportunity to speak, that they um, weren't able to reach the adjoining property owner with the easement. We don't know yet. Uh, did you find a filed easement? Was there actually a, uh, an easement of record? That there, there might be something like that. But I think that uh, all of us being neighborly, a neighbor isn't trying to be neighborly. I think that there is room for discussion between the principals and their design engineers and the adjoining neighbor so that something could be brought back to us that would look uh, representative of satisfying the needs of both parties. That would be my sort of moderate method of uh, making a suggestion. I'm not sure how we would address that because we have an applicant before us you know, we've been asked to make a decision. I think it's preemptive. I don't think there's enough meat in the matter yet yeah. that there needs to be more discussion of adjoining property owners who've never even discussed this to see what would work for both of them. It's not just an engineering question and answer. Right. Thank you. Yeah, I, I tend to agree with you. Um, if I'm looking at the application, the hardcover to me, I'm just kind of breaking it down so we can give some direction here. I feel like the hardcover and maybe the consensus up here is that that's not the issue. Um, the driveway width is clearly not the issue because we're kind of saying that it almost should be wider so we can help accommodate for this. And the rear yard setback, that's essentially this type of garage being this close to the, to the road. Um, again, I don't, I mean, I feel like they're demonstrating here that that could work. I, I guess I'd like to see it work better. So um, any commissioners on that rear yard setback piece, specifically on that, if anyone is advocating one way or the other, this type of garage with a 10 foot setback. Yeah, I think being familiar with the area, I think the garage on top makes sense. I'm just trying to make it work. I mean, maybe we should provide a little bit of feedback because we're going to, not only the easement issue they got to get through, mm -hmm. uh, but what about the three stall? Because it's a hard cover um, situation here, but it, to me, it's since you're sharing hard cover with the neighbor of the driveway, and there's a safety concern that um, a little, if they can make it work to satisfy the neighbor's easement and concerns that come out there on the property, um, do we have enough data in front of us to give guidance on a three car garage versus a two car garage? Or do we really need that driveway? Car versus three car 
impact much of, I think, what Commissioner Bowles is asking is kind of the proximity of the road, right? Mm -hmm. And so if we changed it too far, it's not, theoretically, it's not going to change the orientation because the applicant had mentioned that, you know, this is the most practical way to do it with the grade and stuff. So if you change it too, too far, it's not, theoretically, I, mean, I don't see it reducing, or I, I, I don't see it getting any further away from the roadway. Uh, my concern there is hard cover. It's more of a practicality. If you have a three-car garage, the odds are you're gonna have less chance of a car being in front of the two-car garage because your garage is full of you know long and all that kind of stuff. So, you know, just trying to be practical with it. But I know, and I know there's a lot of a lot of constraints here. But um, if we just well, what's the, what's the hard cover? The hard cover is better, right, with this plan. Well, it goes from about 35 to 32, 32 approximately. So, and that's with the proposed garage? Yes. Yeah, I guess, to me, I'm, the easement aside of the driveway, I guess um, the size of that garage, I would be in favor of, if that helps with the feedback of, of the next steps. Yeah, I'll comment on the three car. I think the three car is fine. Um, so I guess looking at the application, I'm looking at it in pieces. And the piece that's missing to me is that easement piece with the neighbor. So I'm not in favor of it um, the way it's presented. But if um, anyone wants to put together a motion, I'd entertain a motion at this point, and maybe we can give some guidance on it as well. Maybe just because not everybody goes to these meetings. <laughs> um, if we deny it, it gives you an opportunity to any last minute change before it goes to council. So if you were to get an agreement with the alignment with the neighbor and work a, a solution, it can be presented to council and then they can go from there. Um, so sometimes a denial is okay because it gives you um, so it will go to council and uh, they can they can vote on it as well. Just to kind of show us what procedures. Um, my perspective on that, if we deny it, they make changes that go straight to council. We don't get to comment on the new plan. So I'd be in favor of a, a motion to table so they can work this out with the neighbor and then present us with something so we can comment on it again. I would second that motion. Okay, we have a motion and a second. <laughs> second. Okay, um, so we have a motion by, well, Commissioner Libby, is that a motion or a second? Just to clarify. Mine was a second. Mine was a second. Mine was kind of a partial motion. So, um, yeah, I would move to table LA 23-17 as applied. And we have a formal second for that. We have a formal second. Motion and second. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? None. Um, so LA 23-17 is cable. Thank you. That brings us to number seven, LA 23-19, AS Designs, 1940 Shadywood Road. Request a lot area variance, 75 foot setback variance for hardcover and in building. Average lakeshore setback and side yard setback variance in order to construct a new home on existing foundation with expansions. Ms. Curtis. Thank you. Um, this property is situated along the um, Covey Channel and is completely within the 75 foot lake setback. Um, the applicant is requesting variances in order to construct a new home on the existing foundation with a full two-story design. The new home is proposed to be um, as close as 2.7 feet from the side lot line where the existing home is, where a seven and a half foot setback is required. The home is entirely within the 75 foot setback and is 14, or, excuse me, 1.4 feet lakeward of the average lakeshore setback line. Variances for side yard, average lakeshore setback, 75 foot setback, as well as lot width, Overall site hardcover and hardcover within the 75 foot setback are included in this application. The applicant has identified the existing home location, the lot's orientation to the channel, its small size, and the mature oak and maple trees near the channel as practical difficulties supporting their requested variances. Um, regarding practical difficulties, staff finds that there are several challenging issues on the site 
The lot's narrowness and location along the channel result in no building envelope for conforming development. Small lot size and the owner's desire to preserve the mature trees along the channel also create development obstacles. I'm put the aerial photo up quickly, just a little bit more illustrative of the lot. Um, the um, area of the lot is non-conforming. The request for variances, additional variances, results in the property's inability to conform to the lot of record administrative approval standards. Therefore, a lot area variance is also required in order to develop the lot, the, uh, the property. Um, the ability to develop the property consistent with other existing developed properties in the neighborhood would be limited if the area variance was not granted. Um, there is a small 330 square foot triangle in the northwest corner of the property located outside of the 75 foot setback. However, it is not buildable as it is within both the side and rear yards. Um, the applicants proposing to build the home on the existing foundation as they find this to be the most suitable location to build. Um, according to the volume comparison exhibits, the applicant is proposing to increase the height of the home by approximately seven and a half feet overall. I can put that on the screen in a moment. They're proposing to add um, a new 99 square foot sidewalk as part of this plan, the only um, new hardcover. This would increase the hardcover from the site from 27.9% to 28.9%. We do require um, a two foot minimum sidewalk from the driveway to the front door accessing the home. I think that is what they're trying to accomplish there. Um, all of the hardcover within the, with the exception of the 90 square foot portion of the driveway with, is within the 75 foot setback. Um, we have received comments. Um, one was included in your packet and another new comment was provided today by another neighbor across the channel. Staff recommends the Planning Commission discuss the setback for the second story proposed within the 2.7 foot um, area of the neighboring property line. Is it reasonable to permit the further expansion of the volume for a second story so close to the property line? Um, is it reasonable to require the second story to be pushed slightly to the south in order to align with the majority of the homestead five and a half feet from the property line? Is it possible with the, um, with the um, structural architecture of the home? Um, in summary, planning staff recommends approval of the variances to construct um, this new home on the existing foundation. That is um, my presentation. The applicant is here. I have the exhibits from the packet if you'd like to see them. I'm going to just put the volume comparison up for a moment while you continue. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions for staff? The applicants here and wish to speak, please approach the podium, state your name and address for the record. Good evening, commissioners. Thank you for this evening. My name is William Moline. My address is 1940 Shadewood, 4055. Questions for the applicant? I have one question. Uh, we did receive a note from a joining property owner about the cottonwood trees. Okay. We, we may or may not be aware of any controversy with those, but the concern on the uh, citizens message that they sent to us is that disruption of the Root network could cause the demise of the tree, which is not uncommon uh, with uh, legacy growth trees like this. I'm apparently they're about 50 feet tall. Matter of fact, I can attest to that because I've gone through that channel so many times that uh, I've seen them before. Many, many years. I have good friends that own that house for almost a decade and a half, so uh, I'm very familiar with it. Have you had an arborist or anyone come out that would show some concern and analyze? whether your project would, would disturb the root network and possibly cause the demise of these giant cottonwood trees? The people that we've had out to give us uh, professional opinions as far as the construction okay. and so forth, each of them has said if we move the house any further, that that would impact the root structure and that could have a catastrophic effect on the trees. The trees are about 48 inches in diameter, or the one's 48 inches in diameter, and the other one's also sizable, probably 36 to 40 inches in diameter. And so between the canal wall and the house, 
they feel that any disruption would be more problematic, and that's why we were um, recommended to build on the existing foundation. Uh, okay, it answers part of the question. And what was the other part well, of the question? Well, perhaps, you know, if you have forensic inspections from an arborist or someone, perhaps your neighbor uh, could share those with you. So they don't have to feel potentially that those trees are going to get lost. I think they're more concerned about the trees dying and falling over on their house than they are the actual demise and the loss of trees. Okay. Uh, cottonwoods are notoriously long-lived, but they do have a, a life expectancy that ends at some time or another. We've had quite a few in my neighborhood come over and take power lines and get shot. So that could be part of the reason why we received a, a 12-hour message from your neighbor. Okay, thank you. I appreciate sure. the input. And of course, you know, we want to make sure that we maintain the trees and keep them you know, as healthy as possible. So you know, we can certainly, you know, prior to any kind of construction, we'll have that looked at. Okay, sure thank that. you for sharing. Thank you. Yeah, just, and you're going to have challenges. Um, you're going to put all this investment into this remodel right. and uh, have those huge limbs hanging over your brand new house. I mean, I could see one. I mean, you got to do what makes sense. And if you got to take one down or, or trim the branches, now's the time to do it, I guess. But I can see it's a win win as I'm looking at this. We we'll can bring it back uh, to, as we talk as a commission. But I can see there's lots of advantages for everybody, not only the community, yourself, neighbors, if you try to keep those trees where they are. So I appreciate you trying to keep those trees where they are during the construction process. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions for the applicant? Thank you. Um, we'll open up the public comment portion. Any members from the public who would like to speak on this, please approach the podium. Seeing none, we'll close the public hearing, bring it back up here for discussion. Um, And who wants to start on this one? I guess as far as the bin, using the same building envelope, I like it because uh, like what you can, if you can try to save the trees, you can, and it provides screening, right? I mean, that, every, everybody knows that's a very popular channel, and um, I think homeowners try to appreciate the trees being there, and I think uh, just keeping <coughs> what we're all used to looking at when we go through there, uh, see the trees are going to be a plus. So as far as um, trying to shift the house closer to the channel, I don't, in my opinion, I don't think that makes a lot of sense. Uh, I guess the question at hand is, do we agree with the massing going vertical? And it kind of to my looking at the neighbors to the west, it almost looks like they must have done that. So I think that's probably pretty common in this area is when they remodel that houses are going higher. That's a safe assumption. Not to interrupt, but if you want it for the record, if you want to come up and put it in the microphone. Um, I'm actually the applicant, Alethea Sadowski with the Sadowski Designs. Um, so maybe just to further comment on that, I think one of the things for me when I went to see the property for the first time, it was the summer months and these trees were in full bloom. And, you know, my immediate reaction was more from a, you know, a kind of a horticultural sort of this tree's been here forever. like please say we're not moving the house. And so can we design a home that, you know, is modest enough that can accommodate your needs and still maintain, you know, the existing conditions. So that really was the impetus for the design. Um, and, you know, I, I think we tried to be as conservative as possible. I think, you know, hopefully you guys feel the same way. And, you know, as I look at the property too, I, I almost thought that maybe those trees became somewhat of a stability standpoint for that entire channel. So it felt like, you know, it was sort of a necessary. And then of course we found out about all the other non-conforming issues along the way, so. Well, very good point, glad you brought that up about the road structure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Um, bringing it back for discussion here, I think, 
Commissioner McCutcheon, you brought up a good point. It's a very challenging lot. The setbacks are the setbacks you clearly can't build or remodel in them. Really the only piece that, I mean, I'd like to hear a little more from on the commission is this. If you go to the massing um, slide there, I think really what we're talking about is that, I mean, the upper left one, the west elevation diagram, that's the one that's closer to the property line than the existing. And we're just talking about that section of the house right there. And I, in my personal opinion, they've demonstrated um, what we'd like to see in a lot of these applications where you're building on the foundation, you're, it's pretty modest design, and I, I'm, I'm personally for this one. Um, but I'd like to hear some other comments if anyone would like to speak. Commissioner Ritter? Uh, I have watched a number of uh, other uh, infill lot constructions uh, that interested me in that part of the lake, uh, including a couple that were, uh, I would consider to be very contemporary. So they had flat roofs versus uh, gable roofs like this. And uh, they're just several houses over on the other side of the channel. So the, the massing, on a similar, very small lot, uh, seems to be somewhat conforming to the neighborhood. Uh, I haven't looked that much the other direction. Uh, I just use these as an example because they were recently built. This is gonna be something that's recently constructed. You don't really have much option but to use the footprint. Uh, most of these other houses were slightly wider, slightly deeper, the lots were slightly wider, slightly deeper, but directly sure. So mm -hmm. those setbacks are, are pretty much uh, written in stone. Uh, the partial approval, could, could you just, could you explain again, could you go over the partial approval that, that you brought to, to the table to us? I was um, really just suggesting that the Planning Commission discuss that additional mass within that extremely substandard setback, which is, um, reflected, you know, in, in this area here that I'm circling over the existing portion that encroaches at 2.7 feet. Okay. That I was just wanting the commission to discuss that, if it was appropriate to go up over the existing or to to inset slightly just to minimize the the mass from the neighbor's standpoint, if it's, if it's feasible, I'm not sure, I don't. I don't know structurally if that's something that you can do, but just to the, have that discussion. Commissioner Kirchner? Yeah, I was going to say that from looking at the floor plan and design and stuff, I don't, I don't have an issue with that, and I say that because I'm looking at the floor plan on lot one, lot two. I don't believe this is an egregious house. You know, they're not trying to put a monstrous house here. I mean, the Floor plans are very modest, it accommodates bedrooms, a living room. There's you know kind of an even kitchen area with no separate formal dining room or anything like that. I, I feel like I feel like there is a good faith effort upon the applicant here to truly make um, make this work um, as closely as possible within the confines. And I, I feel like they've done a really good job of that. And I generally of all the discussion points here, I'm supportive of this application um, for those reasons. Sticking to the original uh, foundation, and it's, I feel like it's a very modest floor plan and, and just overall house size to accommodate having a house there without without going overboard and asking for a lot from us. Anyone else? Uh, to stop short of being repetitive, I just would agree with what Scott just said. So. In that case, um, I'd entertain a motion if. I would make a motion to approve LA 23-00001019 at 1940 Shadywood Road as applied. I'll second that. We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? I have one comment if I could make a amendment to that. Can we fence these trees that we're talking about? In this application, is that something I, I'm assuming they're going to have um, the, 
silt, silt fence for the lake, um, I think it'd be appropriate mm -hmm. we've been talking about the trees for a while. I assume that's common practice, but I think it's a bad assumption. No. Okay, now let's add it definitely because that would have been is that is that okay? Yeah, I'm, I'm okay with that amendment. That's fine with my motion. Okay. So the yeah. motion is to approve as applied with silt fencing around the large apple tree. Yeah, some some type of protective fencing so that you don't have some cowboy there with a bobcat that accidentally runs into him. You know, we all know about it. We don't want to affect them, but who knows who's working on the house? So. <laughs> Okay. Still support the second? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> um, so motion and a second. Let's put it to a vote. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Hearing no, no opposed. Motion passes. And that ends the public hearing items. Um, in other business, we have LA22-58, which is a sketch plan. Shorewood Properties, Matthew Tierney, 2305 Bayview Place. Uh, Ms. Curtis. I understand that applicant is unable to be here this evening, but I think there's a representative of the applicant in the audience. Thank you. Um, the applicant would like to rearrange the um, lot lines of the subject properties in order to create two more uniform, regular, or rectangular shaped lots. As the lots exist today, they are substandard with regard to area for the district. Currently, the L shape of the unaddressed property is not very functional. Um, normally, the purpose for a sketch plan application is to receive feedback on a potential subdivision, resulting in a preliminary and final plan application. In this case, a boundary line adjustment or lot line arrangement, rearrangement can be accomplished administratively as long as there are no new nonconformities created. The boundary line change will result in 2305 Bayview Place, um, shown here in green, gaining land, and the unaddressed property, the red lot, losing land. Therefore, a new different nonconforming lot will be created. Um, However, due to the new nonconformity, the boundary line adjustment does not qualify for administrative approval without prior approval of a variance, um, which would require a public hearing at a different meeting. Um, the existing configuration is awkward with the L shape lot wrapping around the 2305 Bayview property. There are existing nonconformities in the existing conditions for both properties as outlined. Um, while the proposed configuration includes the need for variances on each lot, lot width, width for the proposed westerly lot and lot width and front yard setback for the proposed easterly lot, the orientation may make more sense with regard to establishment of increased buildable width for the western lot, um, 60 foot width increasing to 74, and a more standard lot shape for both lots. The application does not require a public hearing, um, which um, to date we have received no public comment. Um, while no formal action is required this evening, the Commission's discussion should bring to light potential issues to be addressed prior to submission of a formal application. The proposal could be accomplished in one of two ways. Both require submittal of a practical difficulty analysis. Uh, variance application plus subdivision exception, which is administrative, or uh, a preliminary plat including identified variances plus a final plat. Those are the two separate tracks that this um, application could take. Planning Commission should discuss the two options and provide the applicant with preferred direction regarding next steps and any guidance on their proposed um, rearrangement of the lot lines. That is all I have other than um, I can flip through some aerial photos for you, um, but I can answer questions if you have any. Thank you. Any questions for staff on this one? So I do have a question. Essentially, we have two existing lots today. Um, one is accessed primarily off of Bayview. Well, actually both are. This would be not changing the number of lots, but it would be make the existing lots more usable. Um, but if one would be moving from Bayview to Navarre Lane, access. Solely to Navarre Lane. Solely, because right now it's, it's... It's got frontage on both. Um, if something like this were to be approved, there's accessory buildings that are that would not be within each lot existing are they 
how do those get handled in this type of situation? I think there's a garage. I don't believe that that garage is there anymore. It's gone. Okay, so it's just gone. Got it. So that would be a non-issue then. Um, those are my questions. Anyone else questions for staff? I have. I have maybe a little more knowledge of this lot than I care to. Um, <laughs> so, um, a long story short, the, the home at 2305 Bakery Place was renovated and sold. When it was purchased by the renovator, I, I represented him in that purchase, but um, have no financial bearing in the property or anything like that, and I did not represent him on the sale of it. But when he bought it, the downward reserve retaining wall right by the number 31 with a two of the cursors right now, there was that detached garage. And then there was a staircase like cut into that hillside right above where proposed dividing line is um, that went up to the rear of that home. And there was no garage at 2305. So that detached garage was there after 2305 and it was accessed down off in the far lane. So um, the, there was now an attached garage added to 2305 the one down on the bar lane was removed. I think the concerns that I had, knowing all of that and walking this lot, um, the to be created red lot, um, as it stands today is that L, it has a nice flat buildable spot off of Bayview Place. Um, not totally flat, but relatively flat. And that is a steep climb um, as it moves down towards the bar lane there. Um, and I just, Worry about her. Are we creating the best possible lot for you? Or not are we creating the best possible, but if, if we were to be okay with this, you know, any development onto that is going to have some significant, you know, retaining walls and things like that, um, just based on how far the red lot comes down towards the bar lane um, from the back to the front, if that makes sense. Well, there any? Yeah. Um, if the app applicant is here and would like to speak, you certainly can approach the podium. Um, sure. I would I would just like to point out that 3220, the bar lane was recently constructed, and when I say recently, I mean like in the last five years. Um, and it's probably at a similar grade to the one. I like that one was a little it's, flatter. It's, but it's a, pretty, a pretty steep lot, yeah. though, to my recollection, okay. when reviewing that permit. Um, but your point is taken. Uh, my name is Jacob Tromplin. stake in this at all. Um, so I don't know what I can really add other than I've just been there maybe three or four times. So but I don't know if there's any questions for me or any questions for her. I have a question. So taking advantage of you being here and yeah. the other person kind of the, the question that we just brought up about the elevation yep. and how it changes my concern perhaps uh, with the drainage. Uh, do you perceive that there is, uh, you know? I, 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 from my understanding, from, the, from being there, the elevation change is mostly from the line that is drawn for the new, the new division, the new borderline. That is the most change right there, I feel. So that red lot, I don't feel there's much Elevation change on that lot. So, so from the from what would be the, the rear to the front, or from the yeah, side from the rear of the side. house going from the green to the red. Okay. Is the greatest elevation change. The red itself would be fairly fairly no. Do we know staff of in one foot increments? It's on the survey. Nine forty two to nine fifty eight. Well, now I see it. Well, that's all I have. Yeah, there's nothing. Not much I can add. Any other questions for the applicant? Um, we can bring it back here for discussion and give some guidance on how they should proceed. Um, to me, I, I, I appreciate the, what um, Commissioner Kirshner pointed out about the elevation, and that's something we should definitely look at and and make sure we're not creating a problem with this lot line adjustment. But if that is met by the applicant, I don't see a reason why we wouldn't, or why I wouldn't approve something like this. 
or before it. Why would we? Why would not? I, I would be I would be okay with approving a lot library arrangement like this, so long as they're able to articulate that this grade won't be an issue. I, I can just inter interject that we just are not in the practice of approving non-conforming lots, even if there is a subdivision involved in it. We have discussed this issue before. I don't. I can't remember one that went to city council. I think what they're proposing is taking two non-conforming lots and rearranging them into two non-conforming lots. Correct. We're not. So we're not. We're not creating a new existing non-conforming. But I, I agree with your comment that we don't want to create non-conforming. But this is. You have two non-conforming, and we're just rearranging them to make them more suitable for for use. I feel like. Well, then I just would leave it to the wisdom of our city council. Yeah. Anyone else have comments for the applicant? Give them direction for this. I'd say continue on because I, we don't have to lay blocks around here, and um, I think this is the way it's divided up. I'm sure they work with staff. I think this makes sense. Assuming that if you're going to build a house, it's going to face Navarre Lane. I don't know why you face it towards the neighbor 3320, but uh, assuming that's where the building, building envelope is, and I, I agree. Um, if it's usually it's not informing, it's kind of a showstopper, but since they are uh, already in that state now, I think this matters the situation, in my opinion. Um, I, I, assuming it's a buildable lot um, where they can, where the builder can work with that grade, which I'm sure they can, and it doesn't add like a two-story retaining wall, which I don't think it will, so I think it's an eight-feet drop. So uh, to me, it seems like a, a better situation. Can we create a conforming lot from the two lots? Of course you could, you can combine them into one. And it would not be an excessively large parcel for the area, would it? Would it be out of character with, with the area? No. However, they're not required to combine them. Okay. I, I think it makes sense to do it like this. It just cleans it up. Does not create any new non-conforming lots. Although the great concern of mine, I, Not that anything's possible, but um, you know, it, it's a concern and something that needs to be considered from a development standpoint. But I, I don't think that it's an absolute you know, hard no that it's going to stop any bit of development there. Commissioner Erickson, <coughs> excuse me. Not real okay. um, Well, let me um, kind of summarize for the applicant because it's the sketch plan. There's no official um, vote on this, but um, to bring it to summarize it, I think. It sounds like we're mostly in favor and could approve something like this. I think the sticking point and something they might want to articulate better would be how and where a house can fit on that lot as far as with the topography. But otherwise, I think that's all we have. Yeah, I think so. And, then, and not to reiterate here, but the driveway is assumed to go to the bar lane, right? That was assumption. I, yeah, I don't know, honestly. I would, I would assume so. But any, yeah. more data, yeah, any more data, the better, right? Thank you. What, um, I have a question. Would, does the commission have any direction regarding the um, next application steps for the applicant? Um, they don't, this isn't something that's required to be platted, but there's going to be a public hearing process in either case, so they can make a formal variance application for the non-conformities that have been listed, and then proceed, if approved, uh, with an administrative boundary line adjustment to create the configuration that you see on the screen, or the um, they can be directed to um, make a formal preliminary plat application so that they would be um, replatting the lots rather than rearranging the lot lines with variances. So it's they accomplish the same thing. My my mind goes to your first option with a variance application. I think that. For, for something where we're not actually subdividing, I don't know if it would be necessary for a preliminary and final plot. Um, that's where my mind goes. If anyone else has any comments on that, on the commission. But. I uh, did something similar when I bought our vacant lot in Morano six years ago now, and uh, 
you grabbed a chunk off the neighbors in the rear and you combined it with mine and I did the variance process and it was relatively, I'd, I'd say, productive. Thanks for those sense making. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like that's the direction. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, brings us to item nine. Planning Commission liaison with City Council schedule. Um, yep, so included in your packet was a, a Planning Commission um, liaison schedule. This is something that's a yearly kind of assignment where we outline different commissioners who are uh, on the commission to attend uh, City Council and meet their questions or concerns. So a schedule was made and included in your packet. Um, staff is asking for a motion to adopt the schedule through March of 2020. Could I, uh, I actually have something on the data I'm scheduled here. Could I flip with either um, John or Chris, one way or the other? So September 11th is the day you have conflict? I, I do. So um, August 14th, Chris Wallace is supposed to be represent, or October 9th, John Rustler? Yeah, or were we <laughs> think? I just thought that was the easy change. Yep, or if anybody else is available. Okay, yeah. Yeah, okay. I can make that change. Okay. Any other changes or comments? So we're voting to adopt with the changes? Yep. Can we make a motion to adopt with the changes? Second. I have a, I have a motion and a second. Um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? The motion passes. Relatively short update. There was one item for the um, Waisaba Golf Club uh, parking lot project. Um, it was a conditional use permit. The city council uh, adopted that on the consent agenda. That's my only update. Oh, no, I have one more update. We had a, a, a resident apply for a planning commission position, so that interview uh, for the alternate position will take place in an upcoming planning uh, city council work session. Um, right now, with the new appointees, we do not currently have an alternate uh, for the commission. So uh, the city council will be interviewing that alternate position, and I will give you an update on their uh, decision at your next meeting. Great. Thank you for that. Um, with all that, I would uh, entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second? Anyone? Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. And a vote. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion passes. Thank you.